This is a painting of the hospital I was born in. And my mum was born in this hospital before me. And my nan and her mother, generation after generation. As you can see from these photos, the hospital became disused and was transferred to another location. What stands there today is apartments with little left of the original building, but still some present. Now before the apartments of today and the hospital I was born in, it was a workhouse, one of the biggest in the area. It seems to be a common story across the board when I look. Look at the amount of workhouses that are spread just in the Midlands, in Northern England, Eastern England, Lancashire and Yorkshire, London, a huge amount, and that amount thickening the more central you get. No different in the southwest, or even Wales. To those unaware, we are told that the workhouse was a poorhouse, an institute where those unable to support themselves financially were offered accommodation and employment. The most gruesome of conditions, the most gruesome crimes, the most gruesome experiences is what I think of when I think of the workhouse. Not to mention the workhouse and asylum programming and manipulation, wiping of the past. So in terms of the energy which once stood in the workhouse, all the deaths that took place, all the gruesome experiences and crimes, just like a haunted house, still stay present in that location. And on top of that, or converted or repurposed, were these workhouses into hospitals, which in an opposite purpose away from almost a deaf instrument of the workhouse, was now a place to supposedly heal and birth the future citizens of the country. To me, to say the least, this is just odd. It's obvious that these type of buildings would be repurposed, but the purpose of these buildings in the first place and their scale is to question. Still, the energy remains in these locations, and still that aside, people aren't aware that the hospitals themselves were workhouses. At very minimum, this video will point out that. So what are they now? Let's start with asylums. My local area, there is All Saints, which was Birmingham's asylum. All Saints is now part of HMP Birmingham, and the Birmingham workhouse is City Hospital Birmingham. As you can see from this map, Birmingham's main workhouse and infirmary is now Birmingham City Hospital. Anyone born in Birmingham City Hospital is born in a workhouse. And the asylum asylum attached to the prison essentially is the prison. HMP, Birmingham or Winston Green, previously just All Saints, the same asylum. And this shows how asylums and workhouses are linked. This website's an interesting website that tells all asylums within the UK and what happened to them, whether they were converted, derelict, destroyed, most being converted just like the workhouses as we will explore. Leicestershire County Asylum, interestingly, is now Leicestershire University. Some of the workhouse and asylums of the past are now some of the main buildings of the day, universities, schools, hospitals, just to name a few. So the workhouses, many union workhouses developed as major medical facilities later became national health service hospitals, such as this one, Sheffield's Northern General. Other workhouses like this one became schools, this workhouse in Greater Manchester became the Shaw Health Hospital and the later was known as the St Thomas Hospital, finally closed in the 2000s. 
This one a similar story, was a workhouse and later turned into Hales Hospital, closed in 1990. Then we have workhouses that have been turned into social housing, social development, apartments and huge housing estate. But we find a common story across the board of workhouses being turned into hospitals or other like facilities. And some recently going under redevelopment. Old workhouse buildings still stand all across the country. Apart from residential and hospital occupation, they have been adapted for other uses including school, offices, factories, warehouses, youth hostels and museums. The thing that always crosses my mind in regard to these workhouses being converted is the energy that once stood there. This negative, controlled, manipulated energy and then these places being converted into places such as hospitals where people are bored, such as myself, such as you potentially. As this is a common story all across the UK and wouldn't surprise me if it is elsewhere also. To some people this may be common sense, to others I don't believe they have a clue they were born in a workhouse. They just know it as the hospital and never knew before the hospital was a workhouse. Coming back to Wordsley or Starbridge Workhouse, which later became Wordsley Hospital where I was born. I remember visiting my ill great grandma in Wordsley Hospital as a child, obviously going back there after being birthed and the dinginess, the darkness of the place, the type of stone and tiles that was used, the feeling and atmosphere in the rooms was cloggy and cloudy. I always remember hating those type of hospitals, the old buildings which really now you can't explore, generally all closed or converted into something else with the old use and signs of that at bare minimum. So Worsley Hospital was built in 1861 to serve as a workhouse. It was built as a workhouse, the Union Workhouse. Later, as we know, it was converted into Worsley Hospital after the workhouse closed for that purpose. But then in 2005, the hospital itself, the old workhouse was closed and services transferred to the Russell's Hall site near Dudley. Now this is Russell's Hall, a map of Russell's Hall which Worsley was transferred from. Looking at the old map, we can see it was an old colliery, an old mine. What was there before the old colliery or a mine is anyone's guess, but it wouldn't surprise me if it relates back to our trees, natural energy, harvesting resources. And the workhouse, as explained before, was one of the biggest in its area, the biggest of its kind, as it seemed to combine a few smaller parishes workhouses into this one. Zooming out, we can see how it's the most significant building on the map. Looking at near enough the whole of Kings Winford, and that building is the biggest one. So as you can see today, the workhouse went from a workhouse, to hospital, to apartments, with the clock tower and some of its buildings still standing. I thought it time to revisit the location where I was born. Where's the hospital? As you can now see, a mix between apartments, homes, and an old people's home. These tall chimneys are common across all the workhouses, and obviously England in the 1800s. We've obviously a lot more hidden to what the eye can see in terms of purposes. But in regards to the original buildings around the Wordsley workhouse, this one in front that you see is one of the original buildings, as you can see from the map, and you can tell from the architecture it stood out to me. This is the clock tower, a clock tower we find across a lot of the workhouses, something that links them all. Myself revisiting the place in which I was born, and many generations before me, and the tree stuck out to me. Obviously it would have another love for trees, but visiting other workhouse locations, huge trees or big trees seem to be a common feature. So the place I was born was a workhouse turned into a hospital and then apartments. Again, a really common story across England in regard to the workhouses. I came across the 1881 census of the Wordsley workhouse which lists the names, ages, gender, occupations and locations of where they came from. 
along with various reasons of why they were in there. Words listed as imbecile and idiot. And then things like this stick out, the deserted child, Alice Wiggin, age three, which saddens the heart. But in regards to my own history and words in workhouse, my nan's nan, which would be my great great grandmother, whom my nan remembers, was born in 1887, after the 1881 census, meaning I was unable to find out if she was born in it, and her job being listed as unpaid domestic duties. But one thing that we can say about the babies that were born into the workhouses, they often went on to apprenticeships and jobs, and then the history of them being in the workhouse forgotten about, covered. Just like the workhouse is turning into the hospitals, and no one remembering this or knowing about it, so were the people that came out of these places. With limited information online, I spoke to my nan in regard to her grandmother to see if she knew much. Here is the conversation. Now, my nan said something interesting about Nellie. She said when she was a child growing up, she remembers that Nellie used to look after all types of people, especially children who had no parents or had died in the war and there was comings of goings of all types of kids constantly. Tell us about that, Nellie. Well, I had brothers and sisters that are new, uncles and aunties that are new. But then people come that are there now. So mm -hmm. those people my nan was looking after because they'd lost the family in the war. And there was always people coming and going, yeah. like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but they, um, that was all nice. We just treated them like brothers and sisters and aunts and uncles. And my nan only remembering limited information we fought to ring her sister, her oldest sister, who knew a little bit more. All it was today, me and Nan was talking about Nellie. And... and me, you mean John's mum? No, our Nan. Your Nan. Our Auntie, our, our Nellie are. Yeah, and I just, she didn't know much about her, that's all, and she said you might know. So we like wanted to know if you knew, um, like who her mum and dad was and where she was born or anything like that? I don't know nothing like that, sweetheart. No. Nah. You know, she never went into, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Of course, of course. Yeah. Do, you, what, do you know much about her at all or do you know the same as I Nan? Know, my, my Nan, her, 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 her daily saw from us where we lived in Worsley. Yeah. And uh, I used to go to her every after school every day. Yeah. Uh, and yeah. then one thing and another. And it was a proper old-fashioned lady who was bowling. Yeah. And it's where the maples that wrap round you. And uh, and you should go on the gate and watch you go down the road and make sure it was all right. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What was interesting about it, Ros, is that Wordsley Hospital, uh, where I was born and my mum was born and Nan was born, and I think Big Nan was born, was, was a workhouse before it was an hospital. That's right. My mum used to clean in there. Oh, okay. So she, so she used to clean in the workhouse? When they used to have cut their legs off, when mum was working, they brought a bloke in and when mother opened it up, his leg was on the floor. Oh, that's yeah. it. Because that's what I'm looking into, you see, how all these yeah. workhouses and are... And my mum's mum, Nelly, yeah. her husband, he, had, he catched the disease and he only got one arm. Because oh. oh, there was an infection disease going on there, wasn't there? Yeah, there was an infection disease going on there. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah
was across the road from Worsley Hospital was now a primary school called Fairhaven, which was established in 1969. I just find it odd and weird how the orphanage, which was located close to the workhouse, was called Fairhaven, closed, and then later a school opened called Fairhaven Primary School to educate young children. If we compare this to what the orphanage did, it's the same thing with a different face. No way. Oh, that's a lot, you know, yes, so, I mean, it's still there, but I don't think it's known now. Well, I don't know, like... Do you reckon Nelly would have been born at home back then, rather? Because, obviously, you were all born in that words, the hospital. Well, uh, uh, mine, um, our mum's mum was 78 when I died. Oh, yeah, late. 78 when I died, my me mum's mum, but I, I, I see I ain't got no cuttings or nothing, uh, do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it says it says on the report that uh, both Nelly and Big Nan uh, Do Dolly was um, domestic. It said something like unpaid domestic workers. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah because mother, I mean, our mum. I mean, our mum did everything. Like you know, what I mean, but we were only kids then. But, I mean, we used to go in the tater field with mother and yeah. pick the taters, go down the op yard and do the ops with mum. <laughs> we but, you know, early mornings and everything like that, huh? But I, I can remember as well, I think all you lot was born at home. But I was born at the actual hospital and when I come home, I was two in a casket. What was wrong with me? Oh, I don't know, Rita, I don't know. She said, um, I can remember, I don't, I don't know why. You were born in New Street, were you? No, I was born in, in the, the hospital where all you lot was, for all war for some reason. I remember Mother telling me, and I was putting a... Um, she a, says an incubator. Incubator on the, uh, in the living oh, room. Oh, because you... I might as well remember, but perhaps it's because you were all very well. Oh, yeah, yeah. Were, I don't think I was very heavy when you were born. Uh, Not like bus lots. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Ross. That's lovely. Thank you so much, darling. I've been sick for finding, you know, so I'll let you know, sweetheart, but I don't know where to look because I've got nothing to mum's anyway. Would you know mm. what I mean? Now, you won't find nothing like that back out now. What you've got, the, what we've got, eh? That's, that's yeah. it. Yeah. That's yeah. lovely. Okay, then, sweetheart. Love you. Love, love you, Ross. Thank you. A beautiful woman and what I said about her and my nan having the last of our information is true in a lot of families but looking at more workhouses and focusing in the Midlands my area we have Wolverhampton, Warsaw, West Bromwich, Dudley and Birmingham which I will explore shortly we also have bigger cities like Coventry but what I'm about to show will be present in every single city it would be the same story everywhere. One of the towns in the Midlands is Stafford and my partner Jess was from Stafford and born in Stafford Hospital and asked me to look into what the hospital was before it was a hospital. And as you can see the hospital was built on the site of Cotton Hill, a private psychiatric hospital which opened in 1854. I joke to Jess, no wonder she's crazy. <laughs> Cotton Hill was built in the 1850s, opened in 1854, it was built as an extension to the county asylum, so there was already an asylum. Later on it was demolished and the new District General Hospital was built on the site. The building remained until 1976, when apart from the chapel and lodges, it was demolished and the new District General Hospital was built on the site, where Jess was born. Now with that being the insane asylum, the workhouse would have been something separate and different. And we see here on the photo that the Stafford Workhouse was large and located near Cooperative Street. Today it is still associated with health and well-being, very much like the hospitals. But in regards to the Midlands, we obviously have the Black Country and the towns that I've just explained are listed here on this list. We have Dudley, Samwell and West Birmingham, Wolverhampton and Warsaw. Now Dudley's workhouse was located near or on Burton Road and again later the workhouse became Burton Road Hospital. We also have Dudley Guest which I visited many times as a youngster as well and as you can see it was constructed as an alms house in 1849 
And then Alms House is the exact same thing as a workhouse, a poor house, which the term Alms House predates the term workhouse. But it is essentially and is the same thing. Looking at Sandwell and West Birmingham Hospital to see if we can find the same story. Again, we look at the West Bromwich site of the workhouse. Comparing this later to 2000, we see it was converted into a hospital and became part of the Sandwell Hospital. Sandwell General Hospital was a workhouse infirmary turned hospital. In a lot of these places, the hospital in which we walk today is obviously newer parts, which has been extended and added on. But these workhouses mostly still exist as part of the hospital. When we look over to Wolverhampton to see if it's the same story again, we look at the Wolverhampton Union Workhouse. The scale of it is huge. The scale of these workhouses, when you see the bird's eye view, is just crazy. And all the different areas and compartments, as you can see, from the map, the admin, the dining, the different offices, the lodge, the receiving block, the infirmary, which again was later converted and added to become Wolverhampton New Cross Hospital. We find the same story and it's the same with Warsaw. When we look at the Warsaw Union Workhouse, we find out it later became Manor Hospital and in 1996, a larger complex opened to the southwest of that workhouse site. Moving on to Birmingham, and I've already explored Birmingham's insane asylum and workhouse, but due to the scale and size of it, it deserves and warrants just a little bit further investigation. Having its own penny token with the workhouse on the front of it, dated 1812, and we read a meeting was held in 1734 and orders were given for the purchase of a site for the building of a workhouse of the parish of Birmingham. The workhouse was erected soon afterwards between Litchfield Street and Steelhouse Lane. It was extended to accommodate 600 people. By 1848 it could accommodate 645 inmates and was generally full. A chart shows the births versus deaths in the late 1700s and we can see that the births are far less than the deaths and the deaths far outweigh any births taking place in these workhouses showing its destruction more than an aid. In the mid 1800s a new workhouse was built and the size was huge in scale and proportion as you can see from the plans, the bird's eye view, the photos from this photo in 1888, photos from the 30s, to photos to the 2000s, which in all places across the world, all purposes of the old world have just been repurposed. And these construction dates themselves are at question. One thing that stood out to me with the Birmingham workhouse was the Marston Green Cottage Homes, which were erected in 1878 to provide accommodation for pauper children from the age of three upwards. The Master Green site was one of the earliest such developments to be organised as a village located away from the workhouse in an airy rural setting. The original scheme, remember the word scheme, was opened in January 1880, included seven homes for boys and seven for girls together with a probationary home, school, infirmary, swimming baths, workhouses, bakehouse and superintendent's house and offices. A farm was built to the south of these homes and the site layout is shown on this 1904 map. So it's essentially a village, a colony, which I will later show the different designs of workhouses and the colony was one of those. But this obviously built to integrate children back into a so-called society gives you almost handmade tale vibes weird programming the prisoner tv series type of vibes where these children were put into settings to not only be controlled but to be manipulated and programmed for a change in future society and photos like this with the girls really emphasize the handmade tale type of scenario that we are looking at and no one familiar with Handmaid's Tale, I would recommend that you read the book or watch the series in regards to a society of control and manipulation. Photos like this in the dining room really put in perspective the attitudes. 
close up, we see the furthest boy almost saddened, looking like he's had enough. The boy next to him, completely back straight, disciplined, listening, rules. The third boy across, very similar to the first boy, and the fourth boy looking with fear upon his eyes. These were not nice places for children. This shows a photo of a 1906 swimming team, proving that these orphanages really transitioned into our schools of today, as who were they competing against? This was one of the cottages today, and something else that I found odd and peculiar was the male merit rooms. By the 1900s, a separate male merit ward had been established to provide more comfortable conditions for older inmates judged to be good of character. Presumably, one was set up for the women as well. So these merit wards for people that were good of behaviour, doing what they were told or essentially were awarded and looked after better than anybody else. The photo itself and the wording of the male merit or a merit room is creepy and odd, do you not find? One of the big hospitals in Birmingham is the Queen Elizabeth Hospital and although it states nothing in regards to a previous workhouse, you have to look carefully like with all things and near the bottom it says the new hospital was built adjacent to the old Queen Elizabeth Hospital site. It was built to replace the Queen Elizabeth Hospital and the Selly Oak Hospital. The Selly Oak Hospital is the clue which needs to be followed and when we follow the Selly Oak Hospital we see its connection to the King's Norton Union Workhouse. Just like all the other hospitals being linked to workhouses. Now quickly just back to All Saints the Asian Asylum in Birmingham which is now part of HMP Winston Green. And then Nan's brothers another link to to all of this in regards to All Saints Asylum and Winston Green Prison. Yeah. Nan's two brothers were painting and decorators. They started a business in painting and decorating and she told me that they actually painted the whole of Winston, Winston Green. Green. They painted that. was that. a regular job. That was a regular job, yeah. so they were the painters of that. Interesting, I thought I'd include. On to other places in the Midlands, as I mentioned, Coventry and Warwickshire, which we can see when we look into it again, the same story. It was associated with a workhouse and later became part of the hospital. And then when we look at Herefordshire and Worcestershire, the big one in Kidderminster, a place I actually visited, we see the same story. And this is the location where I started off, which again, I was surprised to find a huge, beautiful tree next to the hospital, adjacent to the hospital. Following the road back around the hospital to see if I could find any older buildings, I came across again, the same thing as Worsley Hospital. Same story. And as you can see from the houses on the left, there are apartments and houses. And again, it has gone from a workhouse to a hospital to residential. The residential being built up around. There seems to be one place that was left that is original. And it was this place. As you can see from the brickwork and the type of architecture, it seems to be part of the original setup there. One of the only buildings left there, comparing it to the building next to it, you can see the difference. Now, quickly, there are many workhouse designs. As you can see from the list, list, there are generally five it is associated with. And here are the photos of the different types of designs associated with the asylums and workhouses. And generally, each design would be fitted and suited to a particular repurposing. Particular designs are mostly converted to apartments and whereas others have been converted to hospitals and schools. The design often influences what it is repurposed to. So the biggest hospital in the UK, what is it and was it a workhouse? 
It's the Manchester Royal Infirmary, and we read it was founded in 1752, which housed a lunatic asylum. As you can tell from the architecture, it seemed old world, almost in design. Photos of outside and the trams, electric energy, finally turned into the Manchester Royal Infirmary we see today, but hugely associated with an insane asylum. Interesting objects are found along the way. This, a visiting ticket for the West Derby Union Workhouse at Walton, Liverpool. Just like a prison or something of sorts, an admission ticket was needed to visit. This one says on a Sunday between 2 and 3.50pm. And then we move on to the dietary for the able-bodied men and women, which generally consisted a mix between bread and gruel for breakfast and dinner, bread, cooked meat, potato, soup, suet, or rice pudding, and then supper, bread, generally again, or gruel, with particular diets for different people. Then we find a workhouse concert programme. This is from 1903 for a musical entertainment given to the inmates of London's St Giles workhouses where they were occasionally given to the inmates as a treat. And I know this to be a similar story in the prisons. I know in the 70s and 80s that actual celebrities were sent into the prisons to give performances to the inmates. And I found this interesting also, a large workhouse spoon. And it was stamped with the union's name to deter theft, it says. But it also was engraved with a number, the number 23, which they say was potentially given to a sign to a particular inmate meaning the inmates had numbers, linking the numbers of the inmates and the inmates themselves, we forget this, they were inmates, along with such things like this as the clock tower and the type of building that they were placed upon, it has to remind us of the clock towers and the concentration camps of the, the Nazis and the German occupation. So can you tell if this is a Nazi concentration camp entrance or a workhouse entrance. The lines get blurry and when we take in consideration what some of the people in the concentration had to do, breaking up rocks and put through hard labour, comparing that to the workhouse's hard labour, the circumstances are very much the same. So if we think the circumstances of the concentration camps were bad and we know that a lot of those were put to their deaths, we have to compare that to the workhouses and recognise that the same things that were happening in those concentration camps were happening in the workhouses. Manipulation of not only the mind but the DNA, the control and forcing of future generations, the killing and destruction of many people, all the same, no different with their uniforms and numbers. So, in regards to the energy that I'm talking about that still lies in these places, these hospitals, these apartments, these schools, these museums, and we think of movies such as Poltergeist and how the spirits of the Poltergeist come because the estate again, or the housing development, was built on an old cemetery, was built on negative energy to say, and how that transmits and then affects what now stands there today. We're talking about the same type of things. Who knows what happenings are happening in these apartments and hospitals. But no one can rule out the past energy and the potential of that affecting today. For if someone's hospital bed or room or ward is located where bodies used to be stored or people used to be punished, is that a great place to recover? Is that a great place to get healthy? Or is that just going to cause more death and decay? These are deeper questions for a deeper conversation. And that's exactly what this channel is. And I know this not to be exactly true in America in terms of turning all the workhouses into hospitals and schools. That is a different story for a different time. But this is true for the UK and England and obviously interesting but the truth of the workhouses and what really went on there and then the future manipulation and control that came from those especially when we compare that into concentration camps always needs deeper questioning love and light to all